Today's video is about something I hadn't thought about until recently, and that's what a transmission failure would look like in a hybrid vehicle and what symptoms it would display. The vehicle I'm talking about today is a 2013 Ford Fusion Hybrid with the 2 liter Atkinson cycle engine and the HF35 electronic continuously variable transmission, or ECVT. Now this transmission features a permanent magnet electric motor that puts out 118 horsepower and 177 foot-pounds of torque. That compares with the gas engine's output of 141 horsepower but only 129 foot-pounds of torque. It uses a lithium-ion battery with a 76 kilowatt hour capacity. To manage the power into and out of the batteries it uses an inverter system controller and that's also responsible for converting the DC to AC to drive the electric motors inside the transmission. This vehicle quit running while traveling down the interstate. The engine will start for a few seconds and then the red triangle that says stop safely now will appear and the engine will shut down. Now I think the red triangle of death and the stop safely now message is pretty much the default message for any time there is a problem with the hybrid system. Now I retrieved DTCs from the vehicle and it had over 20 codes in the memories of the PCM and the SOB DMC. And that stands for Secondary Onboard Diagnostic Module C. Uh, that is the main transmission control module for the hybrid transmission. So after noting what the codes were, we cleared the codes in the vehicle and then started the engine again. It did the same thing, ran for about 8 seconds and then the engine shut off with the stop safely now message. We retested it and there was three DTCs that came back immediately. The PCM had a U1010 in it, which just means invalid data received from the hybrid drivetrain. The SOB DMC had two codes that came back to it immediately, and those were P1920 and P0C2F, internal drive motor or generator speed sensor performance. Now to understand where these codes come from, let's take a look at how this transmission works and what sensors it has available to use as inputs. This transmission consists of five main components. An electric drive motor to drive the vehicle under full electric or under dual mode. The transfer shaft. A differential assembly similar to what's found in most transaxles. An electric motor that's used as the starter motor and a generator. And a planetary gear set. As far as automatic transmissions go, this is a fairly simple design. Uh, one unique feature to this type of transmission is there is no torque converter or clutch to disengage the engine. Whenever the engine is turning, it is turning the input shaft and the planetary gear set. There is a dampener assembly that bolts directly to the flywheel, and the input shaft of the transmission splines to the center of it. It looks similar to a clutch for a manual transmission. Now its only purpose is to dampen engine vibration and driveline shock when the engine engages or starts and stops while the vehicle is moving down the road. When driving in electric only mode, power flows from the traction motor to the transfer shaft and then to the differential assembly through the ring gear. Now when driving under electric only, the planetary carrier is held by the engine that is not turning the gas engine and the ring gear is rotated by the transfer shaft causing the sun gear and the generator to spin, but it's just free spinning. The planetary carrier is the input from the gas engine, and it is spline directly to the input shaft. In order to start the gasoline engine, the final drive holds the ring gear on the planetary assembly through the transfer shaft, and the starter motor engages spinning the sun gear on the planetary set. This causes the carrier to rotate, starting the gas engine or rotating it. Once the gas engine is running, the final drive assembly causes the ring gear to resist rotation. So as the carrier is driven by the gas engine, this causes the sun gear and the starter generator assembly to rotate and produce electricity. This power is either used to drive the electric traction motor or stored in the batteries for later use. When additional torque is needed beyond what the electric motor can produce while being driven from the gas motor, the starter generator holds the sun gear. This causes the planetary set to drive the ring gear. And then the power from the gas engine and the electric engine are combined on the transfer shaft. And this goes to the final drive assembly. 
Sensors on this transmission that are used as inputs for the SOB DMC, or transmission control module, are a transmission fluid temperature sensor, speed sensors on both the traction motor and the generator starter motor, and also a transmission range sensor or manual lever position sensor that indicates the position of the shifter. And this is internal in the transmission. So our first code was a P0C2F. And this indicates an internal failure in the transmission. Either the starter speed or the traction motor speed does not match what the control module thinks it should be. Our second code, the P1920, indicates that the starter slash generator is not spinning at the correct speed that it should be for the speed the gasoline engine is spinning at. Normally this would indicate a dampener or an input shaft failure, but we know both those are working because the engine actually starts. At this point we pulled the drain plug out the bottom of the transmission and drained the fluid. There was only about a quart or a quart and a half of fluid that came out of it and it's supposed to hold about five quarts. Also the fluid was very dark and smelled burnt and there were some aluminum filings in it. Now with two electric motors inside a transmission like this, I think it's pretty doubtful if you would ever actually get steel filings in the oil that would come out the drain plug. At this point we pulled the transmission out of the car and found a hole broke in the case in the bell housing. The transfer shaft bearing would be directly on the opposite side of where the hole was broken or on the inside of the case from it. There is a TSB for transfer shaft bearing failure on these. It's TSB 20-2219 I believe. The TSB is for a growling noise coming from the transmission area. And I'm sure this transmission was making quite a bit of noise for a considerable amount of time before the failure. The TSB has you disassemble the transmission and check and see if the gears on the transfer shaft have been contacting the case. If they have, you replace the entire transmission assembly. And if they haven't, you install a revised transfer shaft kit. And it appeared the passenger side CV shaft seal had been seeping fluid. And I'm assuming over time that the fluid level got low in this transmission. And that definitely probably contributed to this failure. Another unique feature on this transmission, and I think it's the only automatic transmission that I've ever seen this on, is that the fluid is checked without the engine running. The procedure is to run the engine for one minute and then shut it down and wait five minutes before checking the fluid level. And there is a fluid level check plug that is located on the side of the transmission. You go through the driver's wheelhouse area to access it. I believe that's a 14 millimeter plug and fluid should be flush or level with the hole just high enough that when you remove the plug it should just trickle out lightly. If the fluid level is low you'll have to add fluid through the same hole that you're checking the level through. And you're probably going to have to use either a tube or a tube and pump or something along those lines in order to get fluid into that hole. The HF35 transmission uses a Mercon LV fluid and holds right about five quarts if you drain it. If you found this helpful or interesting please click the like button down below. We got a lot of great stuff coming. We're trying to release new videos every Monday, so please subscribe. If you got any additional thoughts or comments about this, please tell me about it in the comments section down below. I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving and take care.